Hi everyone, let's get straight to the point. Today we're gonna to talk about one thing that is really important, but I noticed not many people talked about it when it comes to taking photos with your digital cameras, and that is screen calibration. Let's jump straight into the settings and I'll explain to you why I do that. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to demonstrate, but I'll try my best. I don't know how good it is when YouTube compressed the video and how accurate the colors are gonna be, but I'll explain to you why I calibrate my screen on my cameras to have more accurate colors. What I meant by having more accurate colors is basically I want to match the JPEGs coming out of my cameras with whatever display that I like to display my photos at. And the most commonly used display has to be smartphone displays. And I use iPhone, so I calibrate most of my screens or actually all of my screens, including my TV, with the screen of my iPhone just to have the best display or the best quality of image displaying on other people's devices. So that's the screen that I'm going with. And I have here an iPhone 11 Pro Max. I know it's an older iPhone, but the display color should be pretty close to the newer ones. And I have a same photo taken on the camera and on the iPhone. I did not take the photo with my iPhone. I took the photo with the camera and then I transferred it to my phone. So I have two photos to compare with. The reason why you want to calibrate the screen of your camera besides taking JPEG photos is even if you take raw photos, I want to have as close as the result possible on camera instead of relying on post editing. So I don't want the image to look extremely off compared to what I am going to have. Um, as a result. So that's why even if you take raw photos, I highly rec recommend you guys to calibrate the screen off your camera just to have better experience when you're taking the photo and you don't have to go like super hard with the adjustment in pose. I don't like pose editing anyway. Taking raw photos allows you to adjust the white balance after and have a lot more latitude when it comes to highlight retention and dynamic range and stuff. But then I love the JPEGs coming out of Fujifilm cameras. That's why I want to calibrate the screen so I can have straight out of the camera JPEGs looking exactly or very close to what I'm going to get when it's displayed or the photos are displayed on the iPhone or whatever screen that you use most commonly. But I'm going to use the iPhone as an example. So the first thing you have to do is actually not on your camera, it's actually on your smart device or whatever display that you're trying to calibrate your camera screen with. You have to turn off anything that is gonna alter the colors on your device. For example, on iPhones, there is night shift mode, there is um, true tone that you can turn off actually, just to make sure that whatever that is displayed on the screen of your phone is not altered because of your surrounding, let's say color temperature when you're in a warmer kind of scene or environment, the screen will turn white or like a little bit bluish to cool down the temperature. So what you can do on an iPhone at least is to call down the control center, tap and hold on to the brightness control and you'll have three things. Dark mode is, has nothing to do with colors. Um, here I have night shift that is turned off because if I turn on night shift, you'll notice that the color turns really warm. If I turn it off, it'll go back to natural and I have true tone turned off. The reason is because this, again, is gonna adjust in according to your environment and I don't know how often people keep this on, but I'd rather have a natural tone so I when I look at any footage or photos on my cam uh, on my smart device or iPhone I don't see the colors shifting as I am going to different environment so if I have it turned on you notice that it's also changing the display temperature so if I turn this off again you can probably notice it already so this is how my phone display is set up so once your phone settings is ready, you have to, again, take a photo with your camera, send it to your phone so you guys have 
a picture that you can compare with side by side because this is manually done. It's not scientific. I don't have any machines or software to help me doing it, but I'm a colorist, so I am pretty sensitive to colors, so I can do this side by side. You can give it a try. At least you can try your best to have the best or most accurate color calibration on your camera. So I took a photo of a color checker. You don't have to have a color checker photo. You can, I highly recommend you to take whatever photo that is the most commonly taken on your camera and then send it to your phone. Let's say if you take a lot of portrait photos, you want to send a portrait photo with um, a person and you can compare the skin tone colors because that's probably the most important thing in a portrait photo. If you take a lot of landscape photos, you might want to send a landscape photo over so you can have a photo that is more representing like landscape, let's say a lot of greens, a lot of like blue skies and stuff like that. The reason why I took this photo is because I have a color checker and I have all the colors. It's not like, oh, by the way, if you follow the calibration on my camera, it might not be the most accurate to your display. So calibrate it with your display. Like this is just for reference, for example. So on the Fujifilm camera, there is one really cool feature or menu item that you can select that is to calibrate your the screen of your camera and the EVF as well. And I don't know about too many brands. I think Sony doesn't have it, at least like when I'm using my Sony cameras, I don't see that option. And I don't think Canon has a like a deep dive kind of adjustments as Fujifilm camera. Fujifilm cameras, at least so far to me, has more like the most options to calibrate the screen. This is a Fujifilm XS20. So anything that is similar generation, let's say the X-T5, the X106, uh, X-H2, X-H2S, they should have the same options. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna show you guys on the camera. I have the picture load up on my camera. I just need to press the menu button and I just need to go to the wrench on the left hand side, go to screen setup. And the first page of screen setup, you can see that you have brightness and stuff like that. And these are the options. We have EVF color, EVF color adjustment, LCD brightness, LCD color, LCD color adjustment. Brightness, it's completely up to you. It's a personal preference thing. But for me, I only use the LCD color and LCD color adjustments to calibrate the screen of my camera. I don't use the EVF as often as many other people when it comes to Fujifilm cameras. So um, I did not touch the calibration of the EVF. And I remember Another reason is because I noticed that the EVF colors are pretty close to the iPhone display already, so I did not touch anything. You won't be able to calibrate it like 100%, but then like even if you can get to like 95%, I would say, or above, it's good enough. It's way more than enough for you to get the exact look in camera onto whatever display that you prefer showing your photos. So here I have LCD color. If I compare this, once I get into this menu item or feature, I don't want to drop my camera. You'll notice that even looking at it right now, the color of my iPhone display is a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more saturated. Don't worry if it doesn't look exactly the same colors yet. So this option right here allows you to make the saturation of the display higher. So if you go up, it increases the saturation. If you go down, it decreases the saturation. I don't know why you would decrease the saturation. If, unless whatever the display that you use is really highly saturated, then you might, might want to lower this or wait. No, it should be the other way around. But anyway, so in order to calibrate the screen with the iPhone that I have, I have it set to plus one. That way, the saturation of both displays are really similar. Not the color accuracy yet, but just the saturation. The next item is LCD color adjustment. This is where the most important thing happens. Even if the displays are in different saturations, you don't 
really have to worry too too much because they're not super off but then this allows you to change the color temperature or the tint of the display compared to the external display that you want to show your pictures with so what happened is i have b on the left hand side i'm sorry that it's not really showing but this is b basically the color temperature blue and then i have r which is the color tint the red and green so with the display on my XS20 compared to my iPhone, I only have to adjust the color temperature. So if I go up and down, let's say if I go down with the blue, it will turn the screen to really warm because I'm subtracting the blue on the display. If I'm going up, it will make the photo a lot cooler than before just because I'm increasing the blue tone of my display. And if I go left and right, it will increase the magenta or the red hue if I go to the right to plus. If I minus the red, it will make the display green. So that's how it works. Super simple, nothing super complicated, no rocket science. So in order to match the display, you just need to look at it. Whatever that makes you feel like, oh, the, those two photos look pretty close to each other, then that's the way it should be. And um, you have to keep practicing or use different photos just to make it as close as possible. So with the display on my iPhone and the display on my XS20, I noticed that the best is super simple because they're pretty close already. The display on the Fujifilm XS20 is pretty accurate. What I just need to do is to minus one blue to make it warmer than it should match the photo on my iPhone. I know there's a lot of information on the camera display right now. I know on even when I'm looking at the camera that I'm using to film, the ZV-1, on the iPhone is a lot more magenta, but with my eyes looking at the photo and the camera photo, they look really, really close uh, in terms of saturation and also the color tint. So for my XS20, I have it set to blue minus one, but for you guys, just match it with the display that you are using and try to use multiple photos to adjust it. So let me show you the end result without all the clutter. So this is my calibration for my display. Same thing with the EVF, you can do that with the same process, but it's just a little bit harder because you have to like put your eye into the eye cup. So this is the result. And this guarantee me to have as close as what I'm looking at on the camera display when I'm taking the photo. And it helps a lot when it comes to exporting the JPEGs, especially for Fujifilm cameras, because a lot of people, including myself, love the JPEG colors on the Fujifilm cameras. So when I export it to any iPhone display or any Apple calibrated devices, it will look really close to what I'm looking at. So it helps a lot when I'm taking the photo, adjusting the colors and contrast, saturation, everything on my camera so I have a better result without having to edit the photo in post. That's it. That's how I calibrate the screen on my Fujifilm XS20 to have the best experience when it comes to taking photos, especially JPEGs. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. Or if you have any cameras or other brand of cameras that can allow you to do calibration of the screen as well, let us know in the comment section below as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.